This is an occasion for me. I would have been very happy to stay on here and make pictures the rest of my life in this studio, but it didn't work out that way. over from England wanted to rent the studio to make Carry On Sergeant. And he didn't know any Canadian, so he said, would you like to come on with me? Be one of my assistants. He had never made a film before. He was uh, world famous as a cartoonist. So he relied on me for a lot of the technical side of his work, you know, and it was a wonderful experience. They needed extras, so my brother and I went down and uh, we uh, signed up for being an extra in the film. My dad had the hiring, Mr. Kahnbehausstein had the hiring of all the extras that was on the, the Carry On Sergeant movie. I had all my farm animals in it. Well, I was a child star. I just, with my mother, hand by hand, just had to go through this big archway, and then there was, you know, the war was on, and shooting and that. That's all we had to do, and got paid for it. I think they gave us $3 a day. I think it was the easiest money I ever made. And then there was a second studio that we used. We did a lot of the night scenes of the trenches in there. I did carloads of earth, you know, and had a lot of fellas with shovels <laughs> digging trenches in this stuff. There was one day that uh, we, I had three different caps on. Uh, I was a, a Scotsman when I first went in. They gave me a uniform, the kilts. And come back after lunch, they gave me a German uniform. And then in the evening, they shot a, they had a few shots in the studio. I had a Canadian uniform on. So on one day, I was three different nationalities. Thank goodness they didn't expect you to speak the nationalities. I do all their uh, exposures for the trenches. And, and one day over in the mill yard where the trenches was, why the director got real excited and he started yelling at the electrician to push certain switches. And those guys boosted 20 feet in the air, showed all over the place, and they thought the real war had started, and they run out real fast. You'd think that they were really in, on the battlefield. We had real guns and blank cartridges. I can well remember the chap laying in a trench in, in water and mud, I think for a couple of hours, waiting to get the proper picture. And uh, we all thought that he would get pneumonia. I know when we come in out of the cold, they Believe it or not, they give us a shot of rum, 17 and all. Baron's father at one stage wanted a picture of the town of Eve badly bombarded. So we decided to make a little miniature of it. The building's about this big. But sadly, it was never used in the picture. <laughs> the story changed. Then we went to Toronto and took a showing of the premier and all the wealthy people was coming with the big cars and chauffeurs. When they come out, they said if they can make pictures like that in Canada, why this is it, this is real good. Oh, I thought that was a wonderful idea for Trenton to recollect that it had once been the Hollywood of the North. I don't think Canadians do that enough. I'm sure that'll impress future tourists, you know, about how this was the movie center of Canada at one time.